Most of us would know who Martin Luther is, but not many people have heard of Catherine von Bora. Catherine von Bora was born in 1499. Spent today in a conversation in the mirror, face to face with somebody less than perfect. At the age of five, her mother passed away, and her father, being unable to raise her on his own, put her into a boarding home. A few years after that, she was put into a nunnery. It was a very difficult place to grow up, but she'd said later that at least she had food and shelter. At the age of 16, in 1515, she officially became a nun. But in 1517, something drastic happened. She read the 95 Thesis that Martin Luther had nailed to the door of a Catholic church, and it changed her life. She placed her faith in Jesus and became determined to escape the life that she was uh, trapped in. He knows my name. He knows my name. Through contacting Martin Luther, he made a way for her along with 11 other nuns to escape. She escaped the nunnery that she was in by hiding in a barrel where she was smuggled out. Most of the nuns that she escaped with were quickly married to, to other men, to other Christian men in their community. But Catherine von Bora wouldn't do that. In fact, she educated herself, learned how to manage a home, and spent a few years waiting on God to provide a husband for her. Eventually, she convinced Martin Luther to become her husband. Martin Luther was very slow to accept the reality that he too could have a family. Because of the persecution that he was experiencing in the Catholic Church, they had tried to kill him, they were hunting him down, his, his income was very low because of the persecution. He didn't feel like that he could support a family and a wife. But Catherine von Bora wasn't just a normal woman. She took the years that she had spent training and learning in a wealthy home and moved into a, a former monastery. She turned that monastery into a home for her and her family. Martin Luther and Catherine had six children together. He would write to her and refer to her as Lord Katie, my rib, as he talked about how close she was to his heart. She became a leader in their community where they would seek out, people would seek out her advice on business decisions, on family, on raising their children. She became very well respected. She managed their home to the point where, even though they didn't have a lot of money, she supplemented their income by planting gardens and even raising pigs because she knew how much her husband liked pork. He would refer to her as Lord Catherine, Mistress of the Pigsty. They had a very loving relationship. And as Martin Luther had many illnesses in his life, Catherine was always there to take care of him and nurse him back to health. Catherine was an example to all the people in the community of what it meant to love the Lord, to sacrificially give, to raise her children, to love Christ and to serve Him. And as we look at the legacy that people have left, Catherine von Bohr isn't a name that most people know. And this morning, as we ask ourselves that question, what legacy are we leaving? What legacy are you leaving? Catherine von Bohr left a great legacy but it wasn't her name that was in lights. She was content to allow someone else to be the, the name that everyone knew, to, to be the person that was recognized, because all she was focused on was serving God, being the wife that she'd been called to be, the mom that she wanted to be. She supported her family, and because of that, made a huge impact in the kingdom of God. So we ask ourselves that question this morning again. What legacy are you leaving? I don't need my name in lights. I'm famous in my father's eyes. Make no mistake.